Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors with James Holst. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish? And the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. <laughs> With Cal Schweel. What a specimen. Uh, and Joel Nilsson. This is an absolute monster. <laughs> This is In-Depth Outdoors. Today on In-Depth Outdoors, we're in Northeast South Dakota, fishing just west of Waterton in what's called pothole country. And the reason we're here today is we're gonna be fishing with Andy Fiolka, and we also wanna share a great shallow water casting technique that we use to help bridge that time period, that part of the season where we're coming out of post-spawn and before walleyes really set up into predictable summer patterns. This is a technique that we really wanted to get into our broadcast season, and uh, we're running out of time. We've only got two shows after today, so we really wanted to make a point to get this show done, because I think if you put this to use on your own body of water, you're gonna find it's deadly effective. So stick around, we're gonna get some great fish in the boat here today on In-Depth Outdoors in Northeast South Dakota. Muffler didn't even touch. Nice. Nobody got wet. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes. That should work. There he is, Andy. So what do you suppose, a pike or uh, something different this time? He's heavier than a pike. That'd be a it good- Runs like a pike. Well, that'd be a good change of pace if it wasn't a pike. It's right where they should be. You got this wind pushing up into these old cattails. <laughs> I don't know. Shake. I, horse a piece. I don't know what it is. He's trying to get into them cattails. Actually, he's in there a little bit. We're making a long cast up into this shallow veg. We've got the wind pushing in. Now, what we're looking for are these walleyes that have transitioned out of spawning areas up into shallow feeding areas. And on these pothole lakes and lakes all across the Midwest, one of the first places I like to look for walleyes after they're done spawning is up in shallow vegetation, even if it's last year's vegetation. Of course, right after the spawn, a lot of it won't be green and healthy. I think I got a pretty nice walleye here. I also think he's got a face full of old oh, cattails. Barely hooked, James. Barely hooked? Do you barely wanna hooked. give me a scoop? I will give you a scoop. Thank you. There's not a more fun way to catch them, is there, James? Absolutely not. You know, so much of the approach by anglers this time of year is live bait. Nice fish. Perfect. Nice way to start there. There you go. So now this fish here, almost certainly a female given the size, got done spawning not too long ago. And after they do that, they got one thing in mind. They want to pack on the pounds and recover from all the work that goes into making little baby walleyes. And that takes food. That fish is loose already. Boy, I, I cannot believe we caught that fish. Beautiful walleye. Low 20s, 23 inch fish, 24 inch fish, somewhere in that range. Super aggressive. Up here shallow, around these old reeds with the wind blowing in, that's gonna push the bait fish up in there. And that's where fish like this go to feed. All right, we're gonna let that fish go. Super example of what we're after today. See you later. Now, of course, fishing these stick baits really makes a lot of sense when you think about it. Uh, to try to go up in here with a Lindy rigging bait or a jigging minnow, it just isn't gonna work. 
they're going to be fighting those cattails on every cast. So we use these stick baits. They never touch the bottom. Uh, they don't swim very deep. So you kind of make these probing casts deep up into those cattails. And of course, you've got these walleyes and some pike too, just waiting there in ambush. And because they just come off the spawn, uh, they're actually quite aggressive. The water temperatures aren't that warm. Uh, we're looking at low to mid 50s. It's the type of water temperature that a lot of anglers are going to run into during their first couple weeks of the season. And of course, that mentality is you go out there and you fish slow, you fish live bait. But I'm telling you, you really need to give this stick bait casting bite a try. It is so incredibly effective during the first few weeks of the walleye season. And here's the bait we're using. It's a uh, BX minnow. And the reason I chose this bait in particular, it's, uh, it's a balsa bait. So it's got that real uh, subtle roll to it that I really like in cold water, but it's encased in an epoxy. Uh, so it's almost impervious to pike teeth. And these sloughs out here in South Dakota are just filthy loaded with pike, and they can do a lot of damage over the course of a day to small balsa baits. This is the best of both worlds. You've got that balsa bait with that real seductive action you want in cold water, but it's coated in epoxy, so it's tough as nails. I bet you there's more than that one in there. I changed it up too after uh, come, we come off that road bed there, James, and uh, my minnow wrap was catching a few too many weeds. Got him, so got him. Another one. Exact same spot. I got the net up here, so I'm good. You got it? Yep. Would you like a BX minnow? <laughs> <laughs> Look how she I think smushed I'm gonna, that. I think I am going to steal one of your uh, BX minnows. I'm pretty sure that fish hit that bait earlier in that retrieve because I had that real classic walleye tunk about a third of the way in, missed the fish. And I'm pretty sure that fish circled back and had a second take at it. And she's hooked really good. Got the whole bait that time. Oh, such nice healthy fish out here. It's a fatty. That is a fatty. They're recovering well from the spawn, obviously. That fish is looking pretty good. This is such a fun pattern and there's really no better way to fish it. You start throwing deep diving crankbaits in here, you're gonna have problems. Uh, fishing live bait in here, not only are you going to struggle in around the vegetation, but you're going to be drove nuts by the little perch. And of course, anytime I get to fish a little bit more aggressively, and I would consider casting crankbaits to be kind of an aggressive presentation, I really enjoy that type of fishing. So we're going to let that fish go. Just a super fish, a little shorter than that first one. Absolutely no slouch. I would say she's a, a little fatter. All right, and off you go. All right, I'm gonna set you up, buddy. And I will gladly accept. <laughs> They're a cool bait. They've got that, uh, that balsa action, that slow, subtle roll that you're looking for in a stick bait in cooler water, but they're tough as nails. I'm, I'm sold. <laughs> hey, you remember when we were hanging out last night? You know, me, you, Gail. That's my girl. <laughs> you guys are awesome. And then you went to bed. I was tired. You were super tired. And then it was just me and Gail. Mm-hmm. Uh, alone. Ah! What? Oh, oh, yeah! It's all in the pause. New Shadow Rap from Rapala. fish. <laughs> what do you got now? I think it's another walleye, bud. That's a walleye? I think it's another walleye. Another good one. This type of stuff is not that hard to find. I mean, you take a look at the lake. It's a shallow lake. We've got some wind this morning. We've got some overcast uh, conditions. The wind's blowing into this road bed right where it meets. It is a walleye. Another nice one. Right where it meets this little reed patch. It just makes sense for the fish to be there. Cookie cutter. Hey, if that's cookie cutters out here, I am gonna have a hard time leaving South Dakota. That is a nice fish. There we go. You wanna throw back that players? Absolutely. There you go, bud. Thank you. All right. Got a front set of trebles here that's all wrapped up in the net, of course. Fish is loose. 
great fish. Right about that 20 inch range. I'll sit here and do this all day long as long as these fish cooperate. I think what I should do now is kind of walk everybody through how I'm fishing that bait because it's a straight retrieve is not going to cut it on these fish. What you do with that bait as you twitch it, as you work it through the water, really makes a difference in the catch rate. All right, fish, thanks for playing. Check that line. So make that cast, put it real tight to the reeds. <laughs> And then I reel down, keep my rod tip low, give it a couple cranks, twitch, twitch. Pause, twitch, twitch. And when I twitch it, you'll notice I don't just drop my rod tip. I go twitch, twitch, and then I keep moving that rod forward because what I don't want to have happen is I don't want that bait to float up. I want it to slow down, dart, and still slowly continue forward. And that's almost always when you're gonna get hit. When the water warms up, just a straight retrieve with a deeper diving shad wrap very often will work in these situations. But right now with the colder water, the fish really respond well to that twitch pause. Fish. Heck yeah, up there in the walleye it's pocket. A, is it, what is it? I'm gonna guess it's a walleye. Yep, it's, it's a walleye, 100% walleye. It's kind of nice when they're in two foot of water. You I know, can see it out there. They're pulling away so their tails stick up and it's like walleye. See the flag. Nice fish. Oh, he's not going anywhere. He got that thing in golf, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. Probably 18 so inch fish. Did you go, uh, is that a shallow shad? Yep. Let's see here. So to follow James's stick bait up, I decided to go a little different route and uh, got that needle nose, James? I do. And uh, switch it up to the shallow shad wrap. Number five. I was getting a few bumps on the bigger baits and they weren't getting it, so I decided to downsize a bit and oh nice South Dakota walleye. Be a good one for the pan, but that one gets a pass. Cool. Gotta get another one. There's something going on up there in that little pocket. I think we'll go investigate further. Yes, I think we need to. It's like if you can get up to where you're getting inside that weed edge a little bit, uh -huh. that's where those fish are. Suffolk Nano Braid is the first braided fishing line engineered specifically for finesse and light line fishing techniques. Made with 100% Dyneema fibers, Nano Braid offers a tighter weave and enhanced abrasion resistance through the use of wide angle braiding technology. And unlike other micro diameter braids, Nano Braid offers incredible knot strength and longer and more accurate casts than you ever thought possible. Suffolk Nano Braid, super strong, ultra thin, silky smooth. It's fish, yep. So what we've gone and done here is we've pulled away from that shallow shoreline vegetation and we're out here, basically in the middle of the bay now. This fish is gonna swing over the top of you, Andy. We got the, the net, wind sir. blowing in here and even though the wind was coming into the veggies, all we were catching was pike. That's not what brought us here. So we pulled out over the middle of this bay. It's still real shallow, two to four feet deep. We're basically using the same baits Throwing for walleyes and getting some nice fish. Nice Thank fish. Thank you, sir. I'll hand her up to you. I appreciate it. Got her? Yep. Beautiful. All right. So that's a very, very nice fish, midday, in what is a fairly clear body of water. You know, Andy and I were talking about this. Why would the walleyes up shallow, where there's wind, stop biting, and the pike kept feeding real heavily? Well, we don't think the walleyes did necessarily, but right now the pike are so aggressive, they're so active, midday, we're having a hard time getting baits past these two to four pound pike to catch these walleyes. So we relented. We just moved away from that, those reeds, and we came out here over the shallow portion of the bay. It's still only two to four feet deep. We're still over a real soft bottom. So this is an area that's gonna heat up real quickly. There's lots of forage here. We've got a lot of small perch uh, that are following our baits in at times. So we know we've got kind of the, uh, the food source figured out as well. So right now for midday, we've gone a little bit more natural on our baits, moved off that shallow weed cover, and we're still catching fish. It's messing what? half a dorsal fin, James. Yes, he is. 
I didn't do it. Yeah, he's just gone. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, fish, back you go. Whoop. Pretty quick fish for half a dorsal fin. <laughs> Andy, there's no point in not fishing him all the time. Walleye? I'm not sure. He's staying nice and tight in one spot. I'm not getting those really quick runs. I got a fish too. Do you? A double. Mine's a pike. Oh, but... mine's a nice walleye. Come here, fish. Ugh. We are Beautiful. putting it together. <laughs> Get this guy loose. One hook. All right. There we go. All right, we're out here fishing in the wind, catching walleyes in really shallow water. And so I don't lose boat control, which will mess up my boat partner at the back. We'll let that fish go real quick. We will see you later. This little move, uh, just getting away from that shoreline weed line, which we know is gonna be dynamite again later in the day, once we start to lose some light, uh, is really keeping us on the fish. Uh, instead of being up there on that real soft mud bottom, we're out here in a transition area. We're actually feeling a little bit of gravel mixed in with the mud. Still very, very shallow. One of the nice things about the shallow water this time of the year is it warms up quickly. And uh, if you're a fish that just got done spawning, you need to feed, and of course you're cold blooded, what are you gonna do? You're gonna go someplace there's food, you're gonna go someplace that's warm. And that's what these shallow water areas really provide. Now, I've got nothing against fishing a jigging minnow, lindy rigging, what have you. But if I can get away with being aggressive like we're able to do right now and catch fish, uh, great quality fish like you're seeing here today, I'm going to do that every time. Andy, you want a, uh, like a more natural colored BX minnow? I would love a BX minnow. Your pick. Alright. Where we headed? Rocks! Better go with the swinging rugby jig! I know what to do! Thanks! It's articulated! Swinging head! Let soft plastics move naturally and freely! I know! I designed it! Plus, it's got that extra long Z-Bend hook that you love! And oh, it's got nice. oh, God! Hey, a little help here? Oops! I'm sorry! Did you say something? Come on, help me! Turn this bag over! Fish. There you go. Walter? It feels like it. I've been wrong before. Yep, it is a nice one. That is a nice eye. You want help with the net or are you good? I'll get him. I think I'll be alright. Very nice fish. Smallest fish we've barely, had all day long barely is that hooked. 17 incher that I just caught. Barely hooked. Get some. Nicely done. Just another cookie cutter uh, South Dakota walleye here. And after watching James put the beat down on about six or eight fish in about 10 minutes' time, I decided it was time to uh, cut my pride and put the BX minnow on. And it wasn't just a handful of casts later and uh, another one of these in the boat. So the fish pick the winners. It does. And, uh, you know, fish way up shallow and right on the paws, it smoked it pretty hard. So I better put this on back. James got a big fish on up front. So let's get this one back. She goes. What do you got, James? I don't know. I'm gonna get my BX minnow out of the net here so I can be of some assistance. Feels like the right kind. It is the right kind. Another dandy, too. The right flavor? It's the, oh, a nice one. Can Give me you get fish. It? Barely hooked, barely hooked. Yeah, came off right there. <laughs> I wish they all came off like that. This is quickly becoming one of the better numbers days I've ever had out here in South Dakota. And we got a lot of time left. This is just gonna get better and better and better. Later, fish. All we're doing now is we're just constantly cycling through colors. We've kind of settled on that BX minnow as being our bait of choice. There's so many pike in here. We've talked about that. The pike are just miserable, tough on baits at times. So uh, we're using this BX minnow. It's that coated balsa bait. 
and we're just bouncing between colors. I'm using kind of a hot perch right now. It's got some orange on the belly, a little bit more chartreuse in the body. You get more sunlight, those clouds roll out, and I go to that more natural perch color. It just seems to make a little bit of a difference, that just small adjustment. I think as long as we stay on the wind-blown shoreline in shallow water, uh, staying inside this bay uh, in five feet or less, the temperature seems real consistent. Everything's been in that mid-50 range. And you're gonna find this pattern to be a pretty strong option just about anywhere you find walleye across the upper Midwest. Friggin' timber looks good. We're graveling timber through here. Well, it's the old roadbed, right? Yep. Huh. Cue the fish. We wouldn't want to get out of order. There we go. Walleye. It's kind of acting like one, isn't it? Yeah, I gave that one little burst, but it hasn't... Let's see here, what is it? Nice walleye. eye, big, night, big walleye. I'm flying, I'm flying, I'm flying, I'm flying. Nice fish, probably a nice low mid-20s fish. Come on, I got him. <laughs> there you go, and crankbait's out. Biggest fish of the day, bud. There. That's what Northeast South Dakota is known for right there. Just a lot of just chunky, nice. You know, fish anywhere from 16 to, I don't know, this one's probably in that 24 inch range, I would imagine. And uh, so just smoking that BX minnow. That's a great choice of bait, James, and I'm glad that you were able to borrow me some because I <laughs> neglected to bring them. Get this one back so we can get fishing again. Just another beautiful fish. All right, girl. There she goes. Yeah, this is just becoming awesome. It's a beat down. That's a fat one. <laughs> Off he goes. Another one in that 19 inch range. It's another fatty. That was a pretty one. Got a lot of nice color going. Get it back and get back out there. Yo, buddy. Woo! There's another one. We're almost out of sunlight here, bud. Hey, Might be the last fish of the night. We're gonna have to uh, either get out some boat lights or call this fish the last fish of what's been an awesome day. I think we've probably done well enough. I'm good with that. Well, here's the way I'm looking at this. We thought we had this stuff all figured out. That we were gonna have a great bite. Nice right fish. It's a nice walleye. Right before sundown, and our best bite was right in the middle of the day. We were so convinced that these fish were gonna stack up based on the way they were behaving middle of the day, but that's actually when we had our best bite. But that'll work just fine. Nice fish. One thing I learned a long time ago, it's real hard to miss the bite windows if you fish all day long. <laughs> so that's what we did. Sun up to sundown. Uh, we didn't waste any time out here either and caught a bunch of nice fish. A great day on the water. If you find yourself looking for a change of pace when you're out walleye fishing here in the next couple weeks, if you've got water temperatures sub 60 degrees, chances are you can get in on these back bays, these shallow water areas before the vegetation gets real thick and catch yourself a bunch of nice walleyes like this. And Andy, I want to thank you for sharing the day with me. This is one of my favorite ways to fish. As usual, it was uh, always fun fishing with you. So appreciate you coming out. The fish didn't disappoint and the company was great. So uh, from Andy and I, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. We better get off the water or put lights on this boat. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at In Depth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.